Kuka sunarai sunarai enti 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 Hello, hi, welcome back to this new episode of the Mango TV podcast. Today I'm very excited to have Tamara Groen. Tamara is a breathwork facilitator, tantrika, and body worker. She loves supporting, inspiring others to grow naturally. She organizes and facilitates workshops, retreats, and experiential journey for others to explore living a more conscious life. In her offering, Tamara draws from the lineage of Anahata and Tantra Kriya Yoga, and Ista. She's a transformational breathwork and trauma release practitioner and a Thai and tantric massage body worker. Tamara creates conscious containers for freedom, relaxation, trust, and safety. Years ago, working as a sales director in a multinational company, she realized that her lifestyle was not fulfilling the ultimate life that she had aspired to live. Falling into destructive and addictive habits, she eventually ran into burnout. This was when she decided to get out and create a more conscious life for herself. A new journey began. Tamara chose freedom and entrepreneurship with the drive and mission to support others in authentically connected with each other and more importantly, themselves. Welcome, Tamara. Mm, thank you. So, um, yes. So why don't we start from, from the beginning? How was your, um, how did you get interested in, in Tantra, Neo-Tantra? How was the... Um, how 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 was the the beginning of your journey well when i started this journey um on the path of of developing consciousness i started actually with breath work so for me breath work is the base of all of all practices and taking step by step on this path because I feel it's really a, a, dip, a path, path of development and um, uh, there are many ways there's no, not just one path and I chose to follow my path into into Tantra and it started actually very innocent by Tantric dance and in this dance where there's one person being blindfolded and one is guiding I noticed that I found it easy to surrender, I found it easy to be led, and that I had some challenges guiding the other, stepping into like my more masculine part and really taking taking the power. And so through different kinds of energies and changes in this way of uh, dancing and way of interacting with another, I learned so much about myself. And this is where I got very curious about Tantra and started to try all different kinds of streamings of Tantra because you have like you have white Tantra, you have red Tantra, black, pink Tantra. And I was curious about all of it and all of them. So sorry, can I interrupt you? Just to understand this uh, Tantra dance. Mm -hmm. So where are we now? Holland, I imagine? Yes, I started in Holland. So I'm born in Holland. In Amsterdam? So how old were you, Maso Menos? When the tantra that when you went to this tantra dance, Ooh, this is like more or less in your twenties, yeah, fifteen years ago, like twenty five, twenty five, yeah. And so at the time, you already had like maybe a yoga practice or meditation, or not really. Yes, okay. yes, because as soon as I like, I've coming, I've been coming from a place where uh, where I ran into addictions, where I ran into burnout. When I lost half my family of cancer, then mm. my mother. That's in your in your twenties already. That was already when I was twenty, yeah, twenty five. I lost my yeah. mom, yeah, and my best friend in a car accident. And I had never learned how to deal with my process these emotions. emotions in a healthy yeah. way. Um, I mean, from the outside, it looked like I was very successful. No, I was an account manager for multinationals. Uh, making eight nine thousand euros a month, driving a BMW, which was also very important for me at that time. At the time, of course. Yeah. And so you decided. So you're grieving, and 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 you you know, you you try to maybe avoid these emotions with addictions, and and so casually you end up in this tantra dance. But so when you say 
it was it was a couple dance. One was blindfolded, and the other one was not. And 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 so you realize that for the first time you felt that you had almost had a blockage in leading others. Yes. Yeah. And 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 so you, that that, that trigger your curiosity. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because that was like the, the they encouraged us as dancers to feel like where's your strength? What's already coming easy? And where can you develop more? Improve, yeah. Yeah, where can you improve? Where can you really see like what are your actions? How do you deal? How, how do you deal mentally with it? And how can you then um, find a way to step into your power more? Amazing. And so, so the takeaway from that. Uh, Tantra, I was like, wow, this discipline is interesting. It makes me focus on, 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 on where I want to improve on my feeling. You realize that it was easier for you to be led than to lead. And so you started looking for more. And, and so which direction did you go? Well, first I went into white Tantra, so more connection with myself. Okay, so let's explain because uh, um, what is white Tantra? <laughs> so white Tantra first is the path of, uh, of self-connection. Mm. Tantra starts with with being connected fully with yourself, with your body, that you are aware of of your wishes. What do you want? What is your desires? What are your fears? How do you deal with... Nothing to do with sexuality yet. No, no. Well, self-pleasuring, yeah. and that doesn't mean like uh, creating a peak orgasm for yourself, but it means like really getting to know your body is a part of that. Interesting. So there, uh, sexual energy, is, I mean, it's your life force energy it's your creative energy and it's very important to know you know where what makes you feel alive what arouses you and it's not only um it's not only the genitals yeah. it can be anything it can be a lot of other other things as well yeah we'll, we'll have opportunity to explore that but so just to keep up with the structure a little bit so why tantra is more like you know self-knowledge and and uh, and how did you explore that? Is it was like a specific um, course or teacher or literature? Yeah, I went to the I went to a tantra school in Holland mm -hmm. uh, and India. First, I started in India with all the meditations, like even with vipassana. With um, uh, there's a lot of tantric schools in India. So vipassana, you consider being a tantra practice? It was a part of the beginning. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's a. There's so much conf you know there is so much confusion about tantra people don't you know it, of course in your in your group in your circle in your tribe it, it's clear but you know mm -hmm. for the people that are not familiar people confuse neo tantra and classic tantra they 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 there's a lot of confusion so maybe um i can simplify yes, it yes 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 it's like for tantra is gathering tools for life in my opinion, like this is what Tantra brought me in any of the directions where I went. I, I, I could uh, get any, any different kinds of tools. So, so maybe I did not agree or I did not um, resonate with all of the teachings in, in every uh, color of Tantra and every teaching of Tantra. But from all the trainings that I did from each training, I could, could pick the, the tools that supported me, that that gave me a sense of ah, this I can use when I have challenges with emotions. Ah, this shows me that uh, how, I, how I can strengthen the way of interacting. How can I communicate more consciously? Um, and it gave me many ways of visualizing me, like being mirrored, especially when I started the group work. Uh, first, working with with myself, my energy, my body, and being fully aware of my breath, what happens when I interact, when I, when I become fully aware. And from there, meeting others. And they show me, they, they are my mirrors. All the, every other being that's walking around is a mirror for me and shows me something. So it started in Amsterdam with the dance, then you pursue more meditative style of Tantra in India. And what was revealing to you? How that the process of, of, of self-inquiry and self-knowledge, did, how did, did you understand where your addictive behavior came from? Why you had issues processing the emotion? How that uh, un uncovering happened? Do you remember a moment where, um, you, f you know, for example, for me, my personal exploration started with ayahuasca. 
So I, you know, there was, they say that the personal growth and the spiritual growth is never linear. It goes into like bump. You know, you might like not grow having, you know, no insight, no understanding of why you do the thing you do. And then something happened and you have like a step up. Um, and that this this bring back any memory of, of cathartic moment that you might have had with this practice? Uh, my cathartic moment was actually already before that because I went also into um, different trainings, like like different therapies. Uh, before I went into on this path of Tantra, I uh, was in a clinic in South Africa. Mm. This was uh, one of the biggest eye opens of my life. We stepped into yoga, mindfulness, uh, group work, two and a half months in one house with nine others and a lot of therapists. And the, and all of my behaviors came up. Like I thought that I was really different than everybody else in the world and I felt misunderstood and I didn't understand myself. And there they were able to shine light and to show me all my behaviors and, and to see that it's not that difficult and I'm not so different from, from all the others. That was a retreat? There was a clinic, like, uh, like an addiction clinic. Like a rehabilitation clinic. See, yeah. Yes, yes. And um, in, this, in this time also with all the others, because you see, um, uh, you come in and you see the persons that are in there already for two and a half months and you see like, oh, I, I, what you have, I want. So Peace, serenity. Yeah, and strength and understanding of themselves. And I mean, uh, they don't look at anything of your addiction. They don't look at your addictions or whatever you did to run away from your emotions. They're just looking at your behaviors. How do you behave now? And what, which emotions are stored? They do a lot of anger management. They push buttons. Um, and you're being mirrored by others. And in this way, you start to understand that all these emotions that were arising, they were not, not I couldn't handle them. I didn't know how to handle them. And there they showed me ways to handle them in a healthy way. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, after this two and a half months, I still start, I, then after this, I started studying breath work and Tantra and Tantra showed me another level of dealing with emotions in a different way, because it's not like I go to one clinic, I do one training and I do one a type of therapy and it's, that's it. No, it's a, it's a lifelong Process, journey. Yeah. 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 And so... Do you want to talk a little bit about the breath work? So how how that that was an holotropic breath work or transformational breath work, rebirthing, mm. pranayama in India. I did all the pranayamas in India. Yeah, I'm quite a, uh, <laughs> like when I start something and when I like something, I want to learn everything about it. Nice. So I traveled the whole world to learn everything that's there. I studied with Wim Hof with the uh, Iceman and learned by these breathwork practices it's possible to discover all about you because every emotion has a certain way of breathing also if you want to get more energy in your body if you would like to experience more relaxation um, if you would like to release anything that's stuck within your body or within your mind um, just by breath, by sound, by movement, it's possible to change the moment, to change the action, to change what there is alive for you right now. Totally, totally. I'm, I'm, I'm new to breath work, but I just started to work with a teacher on, um, on a tropic breath work, mm. the, the, the three hours long. Mm -hmm. And just recently, I had a full blown mystical experience. Incredible. It's incredible. You know, and, and, and the advantage. I, I said that a couple of times uh, on the podcast. Um, you know, when when you take a psychedelic, you know, then you you have to surrender control. You're not in charge anymore, and and you know, you need to find trust and surrender, and then eventually you can touch divinity. And sometimes you contract, and maybe it's not available for you. But with the you know the three four hours holotropic breath work, when you get closer to the threshold, you can 
regulate. You can, if, if you feel uncomfortable and the contraction and your, your muscles start to get atrophied like that and, 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 and it is as uncomfortable, you can take a break. You can just you know, reduce the intensity of the breathing and then you move away from the threshold. And, and, and then you can take your strength, get your courage and go back and go through. So it's a very good alternative to plant medicine for people that are not comfortable with altered state and that they don't like to lose control. The holotropic breath work is a very good alternative. That's why Stan Groff created it when they made LSD illegal. But so, so I want to understand a little bit more. Okay, the, the rehabilitation in South Africa was the beginning of your exploration of your emotions. Then there was the tantra, then there was the breath work, then there was India. And there was, a, when did you realize, okay, now I know enough, I want to teach this stuff? Well, it's always gone organically with, uh, with me, with the teachings, because, um, because my changing, my process was super visible for everybody around me. And people started to get curious, like, what did you do? Can what? I have some? I want <laughs> some of what you have, yeah. Uh, so I organically just started to to share share what I what my practices were what I've done. Um, in Ibiza now we're in Ibiza or still Thailand? In, uh, I started, Thailand. Yeah, Thailand. There is Koh Phangan. There is a big uh, tantra community. Yeah. My friends that were uh, giving retreats, they were giving yoga retreats, and they asked me to add to come and teach breathwork and uh, tantra. The Agame re uh, retreat, right? I've been in Agama as yeah. well. That's in Thailand. Yeah. And then... Is that Koh Phangan? In Koh Phangan. Yeah. See, you know it? I, I, you know, I've done an Insta and uh, the teacher, Raffaele, Raffaele Lomanacorda, yeah, yeah. he, was, he was teaching there. Yeah. And um, it, there was a little bit of controversy about that center. Definitely. And yeah. recently, Vice, you know, Vice News, they make yeah. a documentary on, uh, on Koh Phangan. Mm-hmm. And it, it was interesting, you know, they couldn't help themselves in making a little bit of fun, but mm -hmm. maybe, you know, it's okay. Um, okay, so so you people felt that you went through a transformation, they felt your peace of mind in a sense, and so in, in Copangan you started to give back in a way. Everywhere, like everywhere, and I was traveling all the time. I was like uh, in the summers in Europe, uh, going up all to all kind of conscious festivals, mm -hmm. I was invited to, and then uh, in uh, fall and in the spring, I would be in Ibiza, in the winter to Copenhagen. So I was traveling the whole world, mm. sharing and also being inspired mm. in, the, in the meantime. So it's always a balance of growing and giving back. But how, how did you structure your offering? Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it developed organically, but then there was a moment where you had to write down a program. <laughs> Yeah. And and how was that program? Yeah, so my programs are always a balance of uh, going inside first, connecting with yourself and being able to to set any like boundaries that you may have, learning how to state them, to be able to sense your desires, to be able to know your fears, any f anything or anybody that you need to forgive in your life. So it's mm. all about... And um, discovering, it's all about discovering you mm. and connecting with yourself. This is how every training, every workshop, so if it's a training, it's it's like a whole day or two days connecting and starting with yourself. Uh, if it's a workshop, it's the first half hour. But this is always the build up. First connect with yourself, being able to set your boundaries, your, your, your yeah, being able to speak, your, speak out your truth yeah. confidently. Because people are conditioned as a woman or as a man in what is expected from you. Yes. So people might go through life and just later realize, this is not really me. This is, I say yes to this, but I don't really like it. And that's so true for men and women, right? Yeah, because we, it's like we're, we're afraid of being rejected. You're afraid of being rejected. We're afraid of being rejected. And in the meantime, we, we have no belong. problem rejecting ourselves because yeah. this is then what we do. Uh, if we say yes to someone also, and we don't mean it, then we are ultimately saying no to ourselves. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So first phase of the of a hypothetical program is get to know yourself, your you know your boundaries, your desire, 
And then? <laughs> and then from the true connection from your heart, because also Tantra for me is a practice of connecting from one heart to another, to practice and to look at the other and to see that they are also a part of you, like every other being that's walking this earth, every other person, all wants, they all want the same. They all want the same. And how can you connect authentically with the other? So in the group work also, they are of course your mirrors and they can, they can push your buttons, they can show you places, spaces that, where you can grow. You know, sometimes you know that in life that somebody is annoying you. Usually this is, is, a, is a person that can show you something. Is awakening something in you that annoys you. Yeah. And then it's like, okay. And now from in the beginning, I would always avoid those people. And now with Tantra, I, I know that this person has something to show me. So I'm going to look at them with more curiosity. Okay, maybe there's uh, some kind of behavior that I have that, I rec- that they have that I recognize that I'm actually doing. And that's what, what's annoying me. Nice. That's why your parents annoy you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, but so um, let's stay on the program. So people come t- with you ideally for, you know, I mean, not ideally, but I'm sure there's different format. There's a two days, there is a s- one week, 10 days um, retreat. Private sessions, yeah. Tantra massage, I work with opening the body. Also, but before I stepped into Tantra, I was already very aware of how my sex life or any sexual interactions were. Uh, the man was going to kiss me on my lips and in my neck, do something with my breasts, make me wet, my pussy wet, enter until uh, an orgasm, and that would be the lovemaking, the sex. And it was getting boring for me. When I stepped into Tantra... But so sorry to ask, but since you're so open, but so it was boring because maybe sometimes you wouldn't climax. I would have practically never climax. <laughs> because men don't realize that this... Penetration is not enough, etc. Exactly. And uh, are you aware that it takes like 30 to 40 minutes before a vagina is ready for penetration? Mm. So I wasn't aware of all that. No, I never, nobody ever taught me that. Yeah, our culture don't tell us. (laughs) No, no. So in Tantra, I mean, Tantra is also a way of life and it embraces all of life. So also the sexual part. Um... And there it's, uh, in these spaces, it's very, people speak very open about sexuality also and and about fears and any blockages and anything around that. Um, And there I learned that my whole body is sensitive. There is where I learned that lovemaking is not all about penetration and it's that there's so many different facets to it. And also uh, speaking about men about that, with men about that. Like, okay, it's not all about the genitals. There's so much more to it. So how does the Tantra massage work for men and women? So the Tantra massage is about opening, opening the energy body. So for a lot of men, I have, I have men regularly crying in my arms. I mean, also very ecstatic. But for a man to feel that a woman is super present in, in her touch. So I work with different elements. I work with deep massage, with the water element where my hand is, is going all over the body very fluently, with the more air element that uh, is very, very gentle touch, um, very gentle touch. Fire. Fire, very, very fierce, and maybe using my nails and hissing. Mm, the ether. S- yeah. So really the energy body is touched. Mm. And with these different different touches where you as a man or a woman can just be fully open and fully receive, um, you, can s- you can slowly open up the, the body and open up the energy body. So where I also <laughs> sometimes men are very scared and they're very tense yeah. within their bodies. And sometimes they take more than one session to open it up, but... To feel pleasure all over the body, to feel opening, to feel loved all over the body and slowly, slowly opening up this sparkle, this sparkle of, yeah, I don't know, it's, I call it like, like sparkles in the heart. Mm. You feel like a little fire that's starting to burn and you feel your heart is, is opening. 
So in these five elements, massage, mm -hmm. there is no touch of genitals or includes genitals? Of course, it includes genitals. But not predominantly, no, yeah. No, it's not like it's a specific massage for this. Mm -hmm. This is also what's existing, but in the five element massage, you include all of the body, where usually in massages you avoid that part of the body, you include it. Yeah. And so you encourage the man to, you know, not to be fixating about the pleasure concentrated in the genital and try to spread around the body. Exactly. So yeah. it's also not even necessary. And this is also a thing uh, where men can be very surprised. It's beautiful to have your penis massaged without that it needs to be hard. from hard. Yeah. Because this is also such a pressure for men to yeah. have a feeling of performance yeah. that that it has to happen or a fear like if it doesn't happen, what would the other think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a soft penis is a not working penis. For we're, we're educated like that. Yeah. But so try to you know surrender that feeling of vulnerability, and try to just focus on the hands going around the body and and trying to get out of the obsession about the penis, the genitals being hard. And just so being with all sensations. Being with all sensations. That's the that's the that's the only goal there is. Just to be with any sensations that are there. And this can be very pleasurable, it can be very emotional. Uh, I mean, it's hard, it's very imp <laughs> impossible to have no expectations, but with the least expectations to really open the, open your heart, have a conscious mind, and just be there with any anything that arises. And that's um, how long does it last traditionally? Uh, Two five hours. elements? Two hours. Yeah. So going back to an hypothetical program. <laughs> You know, for a, in my, let's let's pick a, like a, a man that wants to embrace and learn this discipline. So it would come to your retreat. There would be a in you know a little bit of self inquiry and and then the massage and then what else? Uh, <laughs> ah, but the retreat it doesn't include it. well can include the massage, but doesn't have to. Like it's never it's never really standard. It's never really standard. What what happens? Yeah. No. So also, tell us a little bit more about what you offer. Because mm -hmm. we also flow, we also flow with the uh, with the with the group. Mm. I mean, we can have a group that is very open already and very uh, not scared of sexuality and not scared of speaking up their truth and their needs. So this group can go uh, uh, in a different direction. Yeah. yeah, and we also had one group that was very with, a f and it's also interesting that they attract each other. No with a lot of sexual mm. trauma, where we go very, very slow and very, very gentle. So it also depends on the group how we move. Um, and there's not one goal. It's not like we're going for the goal of, of pleasure. We are going for the realness, for the truth, what is there, what's alive. And we're going for, um, we're going for, for freedom. And, and, and healing. And healing, but healing, we are facilitating these spaces for people to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. No, we are not, I, I'm not a healer. I, oh, I am a healer for myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, we facilitate these safe spaces where people can step in to discover, mm -hmm. to discover themselves. So we do, we do all these practices of, of connection, of self-connection, connection with the other, um, and, and, and having boundaries uh, maybe a, a bit expanded because a boundary is not a limit and there's a there's a difference within that there's like they say the comfort zone you know and and outside of the comfort zone is where the magic happens mm -hmm. so this boundary is fluent with another with depends on which person you have in front of you depending on how you feel in the moment you can have somebody be closer to you or you want them further away um, but also in life. So what we create here in this space, I think this is the most important to know. What we create in these spaces, it's like a school of life. It's a laboratory. It's a space where you can practice. Nice. It's a place where you can practice and you can see and be seen in, in all of, of you. And you can practice um, setting, you know, setting, set, being strong in your boundaries, being strong in your voice, being strong in how you want to stand in life, how would you would like to perceive. And everything that you break through in these spaces, you break through for life. It's incredible. It's incredible how I changed because I felt safe enough in these spaces to change or to try something, some, some practice for myself. 
And that changed everything, like a ripple effect around me. That's so interesting. But so these spaces, um, single and couple are welcome? Of course. Yeah, we also have uh, special retreats that's only for couples. But uh, we have mixed retreats where there's... Over, because some couples like to m- interact with others yeah. more and be more in a mixed space. Uh, everybody's welcome. Yeah. Because sometimes... Also gender, yeah. whatever your preference is. Yeah. But so let me see if I understand correctly. So what you're saying is that in this safe container, exploring not just pleasure, but boundaries and, and, and you know, and touch and, and not maybe sexuality, but sens- sensuality, that kind of laboratory of, of uh, you know, ability to explore will then allow you to grow in other part of your life. And this I completely understand. Um, sometimes, you know, at least my experience has been that you know, and then I don't want to go into the cliche of 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 women and men being biological biologically different, but it is true that uh, you know there is a, a, a biological evolutionary conditioning into a woman being more selective by who she wants to be touched, because evolutionary she needs to choose for procreation. You know, she needs to choose well for a guy that will bring a healthy baby and then they're going to be like pregnant for nine months. And where it's like a man, it's, 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 it's more attracted to, you know, to quantity. And, and, and so when I've, I've seen couple arriving in this container sometimes, and you see the man a little bit like, you know, expanding by this idea of, of exploration and the woman a little bit contracting. That, that, does it happen often for you or um, is just some, cultural conditioning i mean it's definitely a cultural condition but <laughs> did you see that happen you know of many course. women and it's not only the it's not only the women huh? it's also the men it's 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 uh it's scary somehow to do this work mm. uh not only for couples, but also for singles like everybody stepping into tantra tantra feels scary even mm. breath work feels scary totally. remember totally. and for couples to step into these spaces it can be even more challenging mm. No, especially if they step into a, a mixed space, because what if, you know, what if he or she likes the other better? What if, um, uh, what if they're more attracted to, to the other? What if they t- their touch is nicer than my touch? What if they find the other? No, there's all these... Jealousy and comparison. Yes, yes. And then when you start doing these practices, especially if you are in, uh, in a container like this and you, st- and you get to know each and every person in this container and you can only see the beauty and you can only see the authenticity and the realness and the rawness of these beings, at one point you can only feel love for all of them. And then we get back to the school and the laboratory because then you can sense like, okay, what do I want to practice? Because this is also, we create these places, we call them temples, and this is a space where you can practice. Uh, If you start uh, becoming aware of of your jealousy, you can say like, okay. Where does it come from? Yeah, and and I would like to feel it. Mm -hmm. Because most of the emotions, all of the emotions, just want to be felt. Just want to be felt and seen. And fear, a lot of things are really scary in your head before it happens. And if you're so scary and then you have the, all these cramps in your body, this is a horrible way to live. And to break through that, you can orchestra a situation in, this, in, this, um, in the retreat, like asking uh, your partner and, uh, and, and maybe another woman uh, or the other way around. To, 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 to do something in front of your nose and to just feel mm. what happens and to just feel to feel safe and you are the one orchest- orchestrating this, this moment um, and this is for you a chance to breathe through and to feel what's being touched within your body so yes there may be all kinds of fears coming up and there's nothing you need to do huh? we are not pushing you to anything we're just suggesting and inviting and making a research with you what can happen um and also in the couples retreats it doesn't mean like you have to interact with other people 
You yeah, can yeah, also yeah. just choose uh, because a lot of times also there's this stigma that Tantra means having sex and with all kinds of people and orgies and I don't know what. But we support all of life. Tantra supports all of life. You ha- can have a monogamous relationship, you can have an open relationship and within between them is a, a thousand other different ways, ways in which you can engage with others. And tantra, tantric relationship means that you have a white sheet. So without any of the society's sayings how you should have a relationship, you can color. You can color. Mm. It's you, a nice metaphor. Exactly. And it's also not like, oh, I'm stepping into a monogamous relationship, then I can never be open. No. My relationship that I have now started for the first two years being monogamous. Then we slowly opened up a little bit. And at times when we don't feel fully connected, our s- not a sa- uh, safe and stable base, we close. Yeah. We just say, okay, I'm, I'm processing. Uh, I don't feel strong enough now. Let's close it for a moment. So you can design your whole relationship and your life always. Um, but definitely within Tantra, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, it's it's basically um, a new way to understand and to use eros. It's it's this idea that you know this. It's almost um, using sexuality as a not just that personal growth, but also to transcend in a way. It becomes almost like a sacred practice. F- for me, at the Easter level one in August, there was this. You know, as you know, we can't disclose too much, but. There was one exercise, they call it Temple and Pilgrim, where the men visit the woman at the temple and then vice versa, and men and women are in a very vulnerable position. And for me, just being there, I felt the presence of spirit, like in an ayahuasca ceremony. I felt like I had that set, you know, that frequency of, of, of spirit, of this sense of gratitude of awe of of you know the vulnerability created a, a sense of, of 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 belonging of safeness of being whole it was so emotional i had to like sit down for a second there was an altar and then i discussed with raffaello and i was like you know maybe maybe you know in our dna these sexual and fertility rituals they've been done for thousands of years 10 20000 years you know there was like not just from the veda from india and the tao from china but from you know the the the, the Maya and the Aztec, they were like this ritual where this energy was co- a way to connect with God, and and this is all of a sudden it it, it becomes more beautiful, more deeper, and you know I went uh, in and out at this tantra festival here in Ibiza, and you know the I I told the facilitator that I was a beginner, so they paired me with this uh, more experienced uh, lady for this. Uh, actually, it was a five island massage. And this lady was really telling me that it's it's a different approach. It's about when you feel the lust, rather than externalizing and go and grabbing, just stay with it and internalize it. So you even massage with the back of your hand just to resist the temptation to grab. And then all around me, I see people. You know, there was one of the of the air massage. I was just blowing air around the body of this. Um, actually, she was also Dutch. Lady, and she went into a into the state of ecstasy just with the air. She was on her knees. She was shaking. She was like, you know, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if it was a full body orgasm or a cosmic orgasm or whatever that was, but it looked a very like a, 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 a ecstatic state. And this is so beautiful, you know. When 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 I feel that, you know, sometimes our teenager sons they're learning, you know, sexuality from pornography and and. I mean, in our society, we don't teach our children that this energy is sacred, that you can not only, you know, use it to heal yourself, but also is a different way to interact with others. Um, yeah, I'm very interested on this, on, in this, in this discipline, and so you know, I'm I'm interested in this discipline, and and of course, the my Instagram algorithm figured that out very fast. So 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 it sends me all kind of course and and retreat and. And and um, I see a little bit of a trend, which I'm not sure that I completely subscribe to, which is combining this tantra healing and 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 de-armoring 
with financial success. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and I was like, I'm sure that this is going to get attention because people are still hooked up on the success, right? And so there was a conversation between Sofia Sundari and um, Ines Rock, something like that. I hope I get the name right. And so Ines was saying that, um, you know, she's connected with the fashion industry in Milan and she was saying that she knows a lot of people, most, uh, mostly women that are very workaholic and they're working very hard on their collection and they want to succeed. And when, you know, people would say, listen, you know, you need to take care of yourself, you need to have a spiritual practice or, or, or a meditation practice, they would say things like, oh, no, 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 now I'm too busy to for success, I'll do my self-practice later. And and this facilitator, they were saying, it, you don't get it. it, you can't separate it, you never... If, if you want to have success, you need to be whole. And to be whole, in that specific case, they were, talk, they were talking about this um, yoni, the armoring, of getting the, the, the some of the trauma and the resistance on your, on your, on your hip. And, and so this idea of like anal and yoni, the armoring for financial success caught my attention. <laughs> what, what do you think about that? First of all, can you explain what it is, the armoring? Yes, so the armoring is... All over your body are spots that can be tense, that can sense, that can sense a little bit of cramp, maybe pain, and uh, that is because in various moments of your life you experienced maybe trauma, or can be even a lot lighter that you were scared for something. Um, also, moments where you are scared of rejection or you reject yourself. And this is moments where you cramp up your body. Uh, you make yourself smaller. You mm. you put your shoulders more to the front, and you yeah you, yeah you take this fear kind of uh, body structure. And this is all stored. So it's all stored emotions and stored moments in your body. In your body, and a way to release this is by breath, sound, and movement. So the arming means that there's a certain kind of pressure on these points mm. and you have the time and the space to breathe, to move and to sound through this so that it can release. It's like a massage, but then more a pressure point massage on these points. Mm. And that's not only all Inside. over your body. It can be all over your body, yeah. on your face, but also your anus and your genitals. Mm. And releasing this, like, for instance, having sex with a man that has been de-armored is a whole different world. You, you can tell? Yes. Imagine that like, uh, like the anus is very s stressful, is very contracted, and then uh, having uh, a movement of penetration is way different if the anus, if that whole area is relaxed and is more kind of a, a wavy kind of penetration. It's 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 really different. So I highly recommend um, the armoring for everyone. Also because with this life, with this this way of living, of releasing all these this bodily obst obstruction, how do you say that? Ob ob obstacles. Yeah. Um, will f you will sense more free. You will sense more relaxed, and you. S this will feel also more like rich. Eh? It's not even about. The money, but you, I, I used what I said. Like I used to make so much money, and I feel now so much richer. Even though I have of no course, idea how much course. I make next month, and by this relaxation, it's it's incredible. I, I, my sister's so jealous about this, mm -hmm. but by living this relaxation and living by bringing the gift and doing my work, the money just flows in. Money just flows. So I never have to stress about it. I never have to stress about it. So I do believe that there is a certain kind of truth in what you're saying. Mm. That there is a financial freedom connected with uh, finding what is your true gift. Mm. Like you say, this, this, this woman that you're speaking about, she's working so hard and giving so much stress and pressure on herself to achieve something, maybe this is not the thing that she's supposed to achieve in her life. Mm -hmm. If you go back to finding that, was because it's not like uh, everybody has to work in spirituality, no, but you can find the spirituality in all the work that you do. 
in every job that there is. Um, also what you say, like working in fashion. Um, but you can do all that from being connected with yourself and not running past yourself and not listening to your body because your body tells you everything. And there's nobody else that can feel into your body, into your system, that uh, into what you need. You're the only one that can do it. You need a moment of silence and sitting down and a breath feeling yeah yeah and then you can also get to these states what you were talking about yeah for your connection yeah no for sure some people expect the third millennium to be the millennium of the body yeah. after we had uh, you know the cart and the everything in the mind and so yeah this is super interesting do you offer the armoring yeah yes but so i'm super interested because my wife Offer me for my birthday at the armoring session, but I really couldn't let go. Ah. And uh, and then I had a second one. Uh, I mean, you know, for so many people that would be too much information. But um, I did a second one, the Ista, and it was better. But I can clearly see how I'm so tense. Um, but so, in your experience, how many session men should? Uh, how how would you recommend? to go through this practice, you know, once every month for six months or once a year, or is in, com in tandem with other sort of practice? How would you do a program of anal de armoring for a tense man? <laughs> I love it how you go uh, at this approach very uh, practically. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, my answer is that's not possible. Everybody, every person, every being is so different. Mm. I have people that have never worked with Tantra and they, they come for me for a, a session and their system is already open. It opens up easily. And I have people that have been working for many years and they are really trying hard and probably with a lot of control to do all these Tantric practices. And that and it takes uh, three or four or five sessions. So there's not one way. For me, I would say, because there's also many, many different practitioners and facilitators, to try different things and to find somebody that inspires you. And, and resonates with you, yeah. Yeah, that resonates with you. And to start to do work. Start to do work with them and different kinds of practice. And then you feel like, ah, breathwork resonates with me. I mean, usually between one and ten sessions of breathwork, you release most of what you've built up in your life. Mm -hmm. That's an average And um, if you look at the, t the tantric massages, between one and six sessions usually opens up uh, everybody. It's possible to open up each body. Um, and then you can create your own formula with your facilitator, with your practitioner, and try different kinds of modalities. Yeah, and, and then find what feels good for you. There's not one way. Again, there's not one way. I work with, so I work with breath work with uh, the armoring, with tantric massages, opening the energies. Uh, I, I give whole journeys for several days uh, for either couples, for either uh, groups. So in this way, there's many different modalities there that are being, being touched. Amazing. But so if for one of our listeners that resonate with, your, um, with what you're saying, with your tone, with your spirit, uh, how do they find you? How can they work for you, with you? Uh, website yeah so I have il uh, Illumina Life because Illumina is in Spanish I, w I live of course in Spain so Illumina means like to light up uh, and we say a path to soul-centered harmony so my work is to shine light on a path and you can choose to step on this path it goes towards soul-centered harmony so IlluminaLife.com is my is my website And see all the retreats and all that. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it on the show notes. Perfect. And the intention is that's also why I created Illumina, because it's not about me. Everybody that does uh, that do does my practices, they starting to learn what is their gift. Mm. They're seeing their gifts, and slowly, there's people being born from my retreats. There's people being really reborn. And they're starting to give, bring their gifts. And um, we're going to be an army. We're already a, s a small army of light bringers. Oh, no, that sounds so spiritual. 
But I mean, in a little army of people that really bring the gifts in their life and, and they're showing up. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's Illumina. For the future, yeah. it's going to be a school yeah. for life. And Amazing. not only about sexuality uh, and Tantra, but also about uh, embodiment. nature. Embodiment of nature is also very mm. closely yeah. connected. Yeah. Medicine, because your body yeah. needs the medicine not only of love but also the medicine whatever you put in your body yeah. it has such a big influence on how you feel and how you perceive yeah, life yeah yeah i love your army of light warrior <laughs> <laughs> but oh, and also also um I'm 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 confident that this movement can really grow it is already growing i mean you know easter yes. is like they double every year or something because, you know, plant medicine, vipassana, it's hard. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the tantra path is not only about pleasure, but it includes pleasure. So mm -hmm. it becomes more interesting, you know. Um, but so how do you see yourself, um, you know, if you, if you close your eyes and you see Tamara in 10 years' time, what would you like to see? <laughs> I would like to see me sitting under a tree, um, with a river next to me on our piece of land where our school is built, where there are different cabins. Where? Where? You know where? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, I, I think maybe my favorite dream would be Ibiza, but to find a river here is a challenge. <laughs> yeah, that is so expensive. I love, yeah, and it's very expensive. I Maybe Portugal, maybe Costa Rica. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's see what unfolds. I yeah. trust, but I know what it looks like. It's a, it's a, it's a mountain, and we are there with this light warrior family, and people come in and out, either to inspire us or to be inspired. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, maybe it's not the right place, but I'm gonna say it anyway. You know, I'm working. We're building with some partners um, a retreat center in Sapenia. Where is that? Have you heard about Sapenia? It's next to Dalt Villa in the old town here in Ibiza. Yeah, in Ibiza, amazing. Yeah, it's uh, you know there is the 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 castle is here, and then there is a little peninsula that goes into the water. It used to be called the Gypsy Quarter. Yeah. No, it used to be called the Fisherman Quarter. Mm -hmm. It was built like three four hundred years ago, and and then it was occupied by the Gypsy for the, I think 40, 50 years, and now um, it's 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 a Calle de la Virgen, Calle Alta, all that area mm -hmm. between the marina and that villa. So we're building a, a, a yoga center, we call it, for, um, where we want to host uh, holotropic breathwork, five rhythm, and possibly um, temple night. Or, Let's or, do or, it. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So there's no river, but the, the sea is there. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, more than enough water for e me. <laughs> exactly. And then there's going to be, um, when it's going to be completed, it's going to be maybe uh, 22 bedrooms in different buildings and... So, so yeah, we, we can continue the conversation without the microphone about that. Thank you, Giancarlo, also for creating this and yes. for making it available to, yeah, for us to have a word and for us to have a voice to be heard and now even in a, in a real place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So is there anything, especially I feel to the, you know, teenager and young adult that are exploring sexuality, what advice do you have? for this 14, 15, 16 years old boy and girl that they're bombarded by, you know, Instagram and it's all about the f being nice, being good looking and flashy and, and for men to be real men. And I mean, it's, 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 it's changing, but young generation are still bombarded with the stereotype, stereotypical, stereotypical idea of what does it mean to be sexual? What advice do you have for them? And for me, I wish when I was that age, I wish somebody would have told me that it's okay to communicate about it. Because it's it's such uh, a pressure for me. Like I felt I already had to know everything before I stepped into that bedroom because it looked a certain kind. It looked like this and it looks like that in the in the porno industry. So, and uh, I, f I felt like always I already had to know everything. And to discover it together with your partner, to go on a journey together and to speak about it and to say like, huh, let's try this, let's try that. Communication. Communication. Yeah. Because it's so strange that, 
you know, f- I where, where, where did it come, this, this idea that, um, um, you know, communication is a, is a, is a bus kill? I mean, it's because it, we, you hear that, right? You know, when, when, when um, somebody decided that, you know, asking what do you like is a bus kill. But where did that come from, you think? Yeah, I, I feel that's like, because in all the movies, the people don't really communicate. Yeah. No, they they show you they show you a way that it's it's all going in flow smoothly and or, smoothly yeah. and it's fake. Yeah. It's not what's happening in real life. It's not really what's happening behind the doors, yeah. uh, and it's also not should should not look like it. Really, take more time. So m- my second thing I would say is my first thing I would say is communicate. The second is slow down, mm. slow down, slow down, slow down. Really give yourself the time and the, to feel. Um, to feel and not to move really fast, and because when you move fast, it's also becoming f- out of insecurity, no? Of course. Um, and then you cannot become really aware of what it is that you're feeling or what you want. And self pleasure. So first study your own body. Mm. First study your own body. Now, what actually do you like? Do you like stronger touch? Do you like gentle touch? Which parts of your body are more sensitive than others? So first go on a self-discovery journey amazing that's perfect time we're just getting to one hour thank you so much and as i learn more i will develop more questions for next time (laughs) thank you for coming thank you Coca sunarai sunarai en ti. 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 Coca sunarai sunarai en ti.